Good morning, folks. Today we're going over a record super flare in the Milky Way, solar forcing of the Earth's atmosphere, hurricane alerts, and of course we're going over geomagnetic conditions and space weather starting with the last 24 hours on our star. It was a mostly quiet day. The solar wind variability continued while the flaring has taken a bit of a break. There are big sunspots facing Earth, but they have not had significant eruptive activity. Let's break down the two big space weather items today, starting with the solar wind. Several pressure shocks of a mild nature have been encountering the Earth, and while the CMEs overall were much weaker than expected, they were still able to produce a geomagnetic storm condition overnight. It wasn't long-lasting or severe, but Dr. Phillips is reporting auroras seen over about a dozen states. It was a relatively minor event. We also have to keep monitoring the sunspots. Flaring really could return at any time given the size and magnetic complexity of some of these active regions. The southern spots that made the X-class flares are departing, but we've got big ones to replace them and more incoming from the limb. We'll have eyes open on that X-ray flux. Let's go next to the weather. Where Milton is strengthening in the Gulf, it is expected to reach hurricane status, perhaps major hurricane status, before smashing into the west coast of Florida. Preparations are necessary and likely evacuations as well. This storm is going to hit hard. Eyes open. Same goes across the pond where Kirk's remnants are still expected to impact Europe. It will be continually losing strength but still carry the rain risks with it as it hits the continent. Eyes open in areas expected to be affected by this one as well. Folks, the ESO has done an excellent infrared survey of the Milky Way, with comparison shots available between that infrared and the visible light images of the same regions. Link is below to their release, which includes several excellent images of the largely dust-driven infrared luminosity of selected regions of the galaxy. Up next, we're going to find an article it's talking about a super flare on a K-giant star. It hit X-1000 flare power but it lasted for 2.2 days. It's one of the longest duration super flares they've ever seen, and they say the flare loops likely extended out more than the radius of the star itself. Last but not least, excellent study here breaking down the numbers of how solar activity impacts the global electric circuit and the atmospheric electric field. From eclipses to flares to particle flux, the sun's activity dramatically impacts the electric currents in the atmosphere, which strongly affect cloud microphysics and wind. This leads to trickle-down impacts on temperature, precipitation, and storm conditions. Great to see another confirmation of that here. And don't forget, folks, there's a lot going on at Observer Ranch. I will be out there tomorrow, the 8th, late morning to mid-afternoon, and we have several other big events coming up on the calendar. Really hoping to interact with as many of you as I can, including going over disaster prep, your location, all the science involved, and much more. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.